Okay. The moment is very precious. Normally we advise, do not look at the Kaaba as you're walking in. You want the special moment when you pick up your eyes. Nabi Sassam said, when you see the Kaaba at first glance, whatever intention or dua you make, Allah Ta'ala will grant it to you. So that first glance of the Kaaba, you want to make the best out of it. So normally we tell everyone, keep your eyes down, keep your eyes down. And everyone looks down and they follow the leader, whoever. And then when you are right in the front, Akbar Bajan will tell you how people burst out crying. People see the Kaaba for the first time. You see the Nigerians, big fellas, they're so strong. They come, but they're like kids. They just fall down and they cry. Ya Allah, we see the Kaaba for the first time. And they make their du'as and they pour out their hearts. But be careful, you do not obstruct traffic. The guards will give you one to tamachas. So, alhamdulillah, just try to be, <laughs> right? You try to be on the side there, and you'll be in one corner, and try to make your du'a. Look at the Kaaba Sharif, and make du'a for your iman. Make du'a for your children. Make du'a for your akhirah, right? And alhamdulillah, pour your heart out for five to ten minutes, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the best. When we see the Kaaba, Say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allah. A lady that is menstruating and a lady that is in nifas, childbirth, postnatal, cannot enter the masjid, right? They cannot enter any masjid in that state, right? Masjid. So you coming in from this door here, you come, there'll be escalators, you come with the escalators down, and probably 100 meters or so, you will come towards the Kaaba Sharif. You will enter from the Rukne Yamani point of view. Alright? You'll have to walk around the Kaaba here. This is where the Hajra Aswad is. There's green lights here to mark the Hajra Aswad line. You'll start from this way, anti clockwise, and make your tawaf seven times around. Every time you go around the Kaaba Sharif, right, it's called one shout. What is it called? If you forget, just say a shout out. It's one shout. One shot. One shot is one round. Seven shots make one tawaf. So don't say I made seven tawafs. Seven tawafs means you made seven times seven. Right? A tawaf, one tawaf is seven times around. Okay? So seven shots. One shot is one time around the cup. Okay? You don't need to do anything before you start your shots. You come in line with the Hajr Aswad, face your chest towards the Kaaba Sharif, and you'll make your intention for tawaf, and you put up your hands like how you make salah. Bismillahi Allah, who Akbar. Instead of tying it down, you'll face it towards the stone. Bismillahi Allah, who Akbar. Right? And thereafter, you'll turn your left hand shoulder towards the Kaaba, and you'll continue around the Kaaba Sharif. You'll go right round, and when you come back to the Hajr Aswad, again you'll say, Bismillahi Allah, Hu Akbar. Third time, Bismillahi Allah, Hu Akbar. Like this, seven rounds, on the eighth time, you'll make Bismillahi Allah, Hu Akbar, and that is when you complete your Tawaf. Right? During Tawaf, the main thing is a lot of people talk. It's highly, highly makru to talk while you're in Tawaf. Like in Salah. You're in Salah, do you talk? And the biggest infection in this Ummah is everyone wants to take selfies whilst in Tawaf. Some leave selfies, they put full video. They got the whole thing and they're walking. Can we do that in Salah? Whilst I'm in Salah, I've got my selfie stick. So we make, we make a very big joke out of our Ibadah. We're not there to impress anyone. A lot of brothers put off the social media completely for the two weeks. You take one or two pictures of the Kaaba Sharif, that's that, alhamdulillah, it's a, it's a memory. And especially when we go for ziyarat, you want to capture the mountains and things like that. That's understandable. But to become, in, you know, imp uh, all the time, you just need that fo phone all the time, it takes away from your ibadah. It takes away completely from the spirit of why you're there. Right? So, my beloved, subhanAllah, when we're there, alhamdulillah, we make our tawaf. What do we read? So, we should read du'as, but du'as that are from the Quran and the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ideally, we should learn some Arabic du'as, alhamdulillah. Between the Rukne Yamani, I'm going to explain the Kaaba in a bigger illustration here now. 
Between the Rukn Yamani and the Hajr Aswad, it's ideal to read Rabbana Atina fi dunya hasana, wa fi al-akhirati hasana, wa qina adab al-naar, wa qina adab al-qabri, wa qina adab al-hashri, wa qina adab al-dayn, wa hshurna yawm al-qiyama ma'adid Rabbana Atina, Rabbana Atina. This is the most inclusive dua ever. Then, also, it is highly recommended to recite the second, the third, and the fourth kalima during tawaf. That is, La ilaha illallah wahda, la sharika la, lahu al-mulku, wa lahu al-hamdu, yuhi wa yumitu, biyadihi al-khayr, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, wa la hawla, wa la quwata, illa billah al-aliy al-azim. This is, Second kalima, third kalima, fourth kalima, read it often. From the Rukn Yamani to the Hajr Aswad, we read Rabbana Atina fi Dunya Hasana. And then learn few duas. Learn few duas. We will not recite the Talbiya, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik, around the Kaaba. Labbaik is still, you see the Kaaba. After you see the Kaaba, you stop Labbaik. Now, around Tawaf, you don't say Labbaik. Understood? Yeah, you're going to make dua, right? Now, I want to just illustrate the Kaaba a little bit bigger for you. I'll try to draw a little bit higher so everyone can see. That's your Kaaba Musharrafa. On this corner, you have the Hajr al Aswad. This is a stone from Jannah. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa has brought it down. And Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever kisses it, their sins are forgiven by Allah. It's very difficult to kiss because there's a lot of pushing there, unfortunately, and there's just no structure. So, subhanAllah, if you feel, especially for sisters, you're going to be pushed, pulled. I've seen sisters going there, their hijabs are torn off. This is haram. Right? So, from wherever you can, the ulama says, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. You send a kiss, just make sure no sister or brother is looking at you. <laughs> You're sending kisses by the Kaaba. <laughs> Make to, Bismillah ya Allah akbar to the, the stone. Umar radiallahu anhu said something amazing. What did Umar radiallahu anhu say? Wallahi, innaka hajarun la tanfa' wa la tadur. You are but a stone. You cannot harm me or bring any benefit to me. Lawla ra'aytu rasulallahi ma qabbaltuk. If I never seen Nabi Sassam kissing you, I wouldn't have kissed you. Meaning, alhamdulillah, it's a stone. But Allah Ta'ala has... Put his rahmah and mercy there. That's why we go and we kiss. If we can kiss, alhamdulillah. If you can't, no big deal. From wherever you came, you make the gesture, inshallah, Allah Ta'ala will accept. Right? Then, after that, you get the door. The door is called the Multazam. Try to get somewhere close to the door, wherever you can, and hold the Kaaba. Wallahi, you guys are all so lucky. You know, most people went in the last two years, they could not touch the Kaaba. Due to Corona, they... You know, subhanAllah, cornered it off. But now, they actually opened it and you can actually touch the Kaaba again. It's like a child holding the mother again. So, alhamdulillah, we try to get wherever we can, but be careful again. Don't harm anyone. And sisters, be careful you're not tramping over a brother. Brother, be careful you're not holding a sister. This is haram. In trying to do good, we do more evil sometimes. So, alhamdulillah, we, a few brothers, if you are together, we make a little circle and we create a little hub in one corner. And uh, we allow our sisters to go easily, inshallah ta'ala. Right? So that is the multism. Right? Here you get, you get this, uh, what you call this, uh, maqam Ibrahim. Okay? The maqam Ibrahim is here. Now what is the maqam Ibrahim? It is the stone where Sayyidina Ibrahim wasalam, stood on and it elevated him to build the Kaaba Musharrafa. Right? Now, we, this is another misconception a lot of people have. After you finish your tawaf, they say, make two rakats behind the maqam Ibrahim. Isn't it? So everyone thinks they have to make it here. And then what happens is the tawaf is happening, and people are stubborn because the sheikh told them they must make behind the maqam Ibrahim, and everyone wants to read salah here, and then there's tramping, pushing, pulling, you're making salah, your ihram is falling down, you're trying to push someone, it's a big scene there. And subhanallah, it's just ignorance. Behind the maqam Ibrahim means that don't make the stura cast in front of the maqam Ibrahim. 
anywhere behind. So even if you're here and you're behind the maqam of Ibrahim, it is counted. So alhamdulillah, go right at the back somewhere. It's fine. You're behind the maqam of Ibrahim. When I say behind the maqam of Ibrahim, it means don't be in front of it. You can't make the two rakats between the maqam of Ibrahim and the Kaaba. So go upstairs, go downstairs, right at the back, make your two rakats and it's perfectly normal, alhamdulillah. Right? In that way, you evade so much stress on yourself and giving stress to others. Then, around the corner, you will get the hijr. It's a small semi-circle wall there. Or it is called the hatim. Now, the hijr and the hatim, in the old days, the Kaaba Sharif was actually semi-circular. The, the Kaaba was like this. You see? That was the Kaaba. It was never a cube. It was semi-circular in the time of Ibrahim a.s. But in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when they remade the Kaaba, because it was brittle, it was falling down, they restored it, they renovated it. The people of Makkah did not have halal funds. They had a lot of funds, but most of them was, were involved in gambling and prostitution, all the wrong things. So they never have halal funds. Even the Meccans, they had the conscience that we cannot give dirty money to Allah. So they made the cube with pure money and they ran out of money. So they said, we'll make a small little wall here denoting the full Kaaba. When we get money, we'll build it. And they never get a chance. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa his time said, I don't want to cause political rift because of a Kaaba. But if I had it my way, I will restore the wall around. When Abdullah bin Zubair radiallahu anhu, who was the nephew of Aisha radiallahu anha, when he took charge, then Aisha radiallahu anha told him that Nabi Sallallahu wish was to restore the Kaaba in this way. And he said that I will do it. And he restored the Kaaba in its full secu uh, 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 hmm? circular wall. Yeah? Circular wall. And he made two doors, one for entry, one for going out. Right? And it was about two meters high. Two and a half meters, sorry, two and a half meters high. It was much more lower than the Kaaba today. The Kaaba today got its height because of the Ottomans. The Ottomans built it because other buildings around was going very high and the Kaaba was dwindling. So to give the Kaaba importance, the Ottomans went nine meters high. <laughs> Otherwise, the Kaaba was always much more shorter. Okay? So subhanAllah, it was restored on the circular. But then Hajjaj bin Yusuf the tyrant came and he was against Abdullah bin Zubair. And anything Abdullah bin Zubair done, he done the opposite. So he broke the, everything down and he made it cube again. And he made it back like that at how it was in the Quraysh time. Time of Harun al-Rashid's time, the Abbas al Kharif, he wanted to restore the Kaaba again back to circular. But Imam Malik rahmatullahi stopped him and said, if you do that, it will become a toy of the kings. Every king will come and do it his way and then the Kaaba will lose its sanctity. People will not respect it anymore. So just leave it as how it is. It doesn't matter. The main thing is Allah's rahmat comes. So subhanAllah, since then, the Kaaba has been left like that. It has been restored many times. In 1200, there was a fire, got damaged. I think Qutbe or one of the kings restored it. And in 1996, the Saudi government, Alhamdulillah, was there at that time when they completely restored the entire Kaaba again. They took off the bricks. They put new bricks uh, from the Mount Qubais right opposite. It's not about the bricks or the wall. It's about that space, that place. Allah's Rahmah comes there. And Nabi Karim Sallallahu said, above the Kaaba. So this is your Kaaba. It's the penny center of the world. The world rotates around it. And that's why we all make sajda into that direction. And there's an energy, and today's science actually proves that there's an energy pulling towards the Kaaba, which pulls out all our stress. When we're making sajda towards the Kaaba, you make sajda into any other direction. It will not relieve you of the stress as much as it will facing the Kaaba Musharraf. It's just a natural phenomenon that Allah Ta'ala has made. And above the Kaaba, in the heavens, Allah Ta'ala has the Baytul Ma'mur, which is another Kaaba directly above for the angels. And as how we're making tawaf down here, every day Allah creates 70,000 angels. They make Allah Ta'ala's tawaf there up, but they never get a chance to come again. Once they're done, the next day Allah creates another 70,000. If you're going your second time and third time, you are even more luckier than the angels. Okay? So, I told you about the Hajr Aswad. I told you about the uh, Multazam. I told you about Maqam Ibrahim. I told you about the Hijr. Then, 
On this side here is Rukne Yamani. Rukne Yamani is just the corner of the Kaaba, and it just, it's cut out, the material is cut out, and you'll just see stone. And Nabi Sallallahu said, the angels are there, and they make salam with you. So if you can pass your hand over the stone, so I'm making musafaha with the malaika. Okay, that is Rukna al-Yamani. So you get Rukna al-Yamani, Hajra Aswad, Rukna Shami, and Rukna Iraqi. Okay? And which, which one is Rukna Australia? This one here. This is the Hajra Aswad, and this is facing directly to Australia. So when we're making Salah, we're facing directly to the Hajra Aswad. You know why? Because we got the most sins. <laughs> we need forgiveness the most, inshallah. Okay. So you'll start here. You'll make your intention. You'll face here. Bismillah, ya Allahu Akbar. You'll go around one shot, two shots, three shots. La ilaha illallah wahda wa la sharika la. Subhanallah wa alhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wa Allahu Akbar. Some du'as that you will learn, inshallah. From Rukn Yamani to Hajr Aswad, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanata wa fi al-akhirati hasanata wa kin adhaab al-nar. No speaking, no looking around. No, subhanallah, taking selfies. You go one show, two, three, four, five. On the seventh show, when you finish, the eighth time you say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. You'll go, you look for a nice space somewhere around, and you make your two rakat salah. That two rakat salah, Qul ya yu al-kafirun in the first rakat, Qul hu Allahu ahad in the second rakat. The question is sometimes, that two rakat sometimes comes between uh, after Asr. And after Asr at the time of sunset, is makru to read that salah, yeah? So you'll wait and you'll read the two rakats after Maghrib. You'll wait and you'll read it after Maghrib. Similarly, after Fajr you do your tawaf and it's sunrise now. You don't read the two rakats. You wait after sunrise, you make your two rakats, inshallah ta'ala. All right? So we finish with tawaf now. The first, when you're coming in, you, I told you, put your ihram out, right hand. Now why we do that? And also for men, for the first three rounds around the Kaaba, you will walk briskly. Walk a little briskly. Why we do that is, in the time of Sahaba, when they went to Makkah, of course they were in Makkah, and they were very, very strong, yeah? But mashallah, when they went into Medina to Munawwara, they came to Medina, and uh, when they came to Medina, Munawwara, people said awful things about them. What did they say? People said that they lost their strength in Medina. <laughs> they became like, you know, you know weak. So Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to show the Meccans that my Sahaba have not become weak. That's why he asked them to open up their muscle and asked them to walk briskly. So that's the reason why they opened their right hands and walked briskly. Now today, who you want to show your muscle to? If you even have muscles. So, <laughs> so subhanAllah, why, why we want to open up our arm? It's not about that. Although that time has gone, it's just to remember the difficulty of the Sahaba. Most of what we are doing there is commemorating why we go Safa Marwa? We're thinking about the difficulty of Hajar salam and Ismail salam. Why are we opening up our hands? We're thinking of the difficulty of Sahaba. The lesson behind it. Right? And why we make tawaf? Because everything goes around the Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even right now, our world is going around the Arsh of Allah. We, you know it or you don't know it. That's why Allah says, everything is in the tasbih of Allah, taw'an wa karha, whether you like it or not. The entire world right now is going around. Even the sun is going around the Arsh of Allah. You see everything moving, but everything is moving with Allah's command around the Arsh of Allah. Subhanahu wa so we also, we're going and we're doing the circular movement around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the middle and the pivot of the world which is aligned, aligned directly to under the Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are by the Kaaba, you're completely aligned to the Arsh of Allah. And when you're in Masjid Al-Aqsa, you are aligned to the door that opens towards the Akhirah. That's why Nabi Sallallahu never go from Makkah up. He went to Aqsa and then he went through the door up from Aqsa. 